Welcome. Very glad to see you. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you are visiting us. Uh, you know that uh, we are an active member of the United Nations and with different United Nations institutions. We cooperate very successfully. I'm glad that uh, you are the executive director of the United Nations uh, Human Settlement Program, Habitat, visiting us. I know that you promote the values of uh, equality, uh, reduction of poverty, and uh, urbanization. So you probably are aware about uh, the figures uh, with respect to reduction of poverty. We, uh, I think, managed to successfully cope with this global disease and the level of poverty in Azerbaijan is around 5%, uh, which demonstrates that we managed to use properly the revenues from energy sector to have an even distribution of the wealth. And of course, the new opportunities with respect to economic reforms, employment will of course create uh, the new picture in Azerbaijan because our population is growing, therefore issues related to employment and of course uh, poverty level which is directly linked to that are of special importance. I'm grateful uh, that you uh, visited the liberated territories. I know that you have been in Agdam and saw yourself the scope of devastation and I can assure you that uh, in all the liberated territories the picture is the same. Total destruction, devastation, vandalism, barbarism and as a result uh, Agdam do not exist. Uh, the city which uh, was a place for tens of thousands of people now in, in ruins. And this was done by Armenians, by Armenian criminal regime during the uh, years of occupation, almost 30 years. It was a deliberate planned demolition of our cities and villages, historical religious monuments, in order to wipe off the uh, traces of uh, uh, Azerbaijani culture and uh, history. But our liberation war demonstrated that sooner or later justice will prevail. You must be patient, at the same time you must be committed to your country and you must work every day in order to achieve the goal. And our war was a, a liberation war. We put an end to occupation, put an end to forces of evil on our land. And probably you've been informed that uh, Armenians uh, also uh, desecrated and destroyed our religious monuments. 65 mosques have been totally destroyed and in two remaining they kept pigs and cows, insulting the feelings of all the Muslims of the world. Unfortunately, the international community was silent during all these years of occupation, though, as you know, United Nations Security Council and General Assembly and other international institutions, important international institutions, adopted resolutions and uh, decisions supporting our position, uh, there was no serious pressure on Armenia. No sanctions were imposed on Armenia. And even uh, some countries um, tried to put on the same scale the aggressor and the victim of aggression. And that was one of the main reasons why Armenians kept these territories for so long. And if not for our courage and uh, patriotism and force, this occupation would have continued. Because it seemed to us 
than international organizations already uh, adjusted themselves to this situation. Minsk Group, as a group of strange tourists, was visiting uh, us several times a year uh, with these useless uh, negotiations. And now it's clear that these negotiations was only a kind of a curtain uh, behind which Armenia tried to seal the results of occupation. Uh, they were changing the names of our cities and villages. Uh, they were doing everything in order that uh, the world forgets about occupation. But Azerbaijani people did not forget. None of us forgot, and all of us, as one, uh, were ready to sacrifice our lives to liberate our historic motherland. And it happened. And now we have a big challenge in front of us. I'm sure you've been informed about our plans, and probably you've seen some already visible part of our reconstruction process. It's a huge task. So far, we did not receive any dollar of international assistance, neither from international organizations nor from any country of the world. All what we are doing, we are doing at our own expense. And we will continue to do it, but of course it is strange that after uh, almost one year and a half after the liberation of the territories, no one is willing to help us. Only words, nothing more. No donor conference idea, no financial support. Even the famous uh, non-governmental organizations, the famous international foundations, they turn a blind eye on what has happened in Karabakh and Zangezur. This is regrettable. Uh, you know, we will uh, reconstruct the territories and create, as I said, an example of heaven on earth in Karabakh and Zangezur. We will do it at any cost. But I think that this uh, ignorance of international organizations, donor organizations, uh, big foundations is unacceptable. We hope that uh, United Nations will uh, uh, support us uh, through its organizations and through its channels of communication. We'll, uh, uh, we'll deliver this important message that Azerbaijan needs to be supported. Your visit we consider as a sign of that support. I'm sure you will report about what you've seen there. Because one thing is to, to hear, to know, to read, another thing when you come and see with your own eyes. And also, of course, it's important that the world knows about Armenian barbarism. Uh, this uh, should be punished. We punished them during the war, the way that they will never forget. But they should be also international uh, punishment for aggressor. And of course, uh, the uh, reparations, we demand reparations. We already hired uh, international institutions, uh, some lawyer groups, in order to help us to raise this issue in uh, international arena. So these are the plans, and uh, uh, I think for the next year program we need to adjust in our cooperation this important new reality which created on the ground. The return of the uh, internally displaced persons on the liberated territories is now not possible because of the landmines, and we already have, uh, unfortunately, more than 200 people killed or severely injured 
because of the landmines and uh, also cleaning these mines with a lot of expertise and technical capability. Uh, and uh, also we need to create decent conditions for those who will go back and the process of start. So I'm sure that uh, you will uh, visit us again because this is really a very important issue, I think, on the global arena and the way how we will reconstruct the territory which is same size of the territory of Lebanon, I think will be a good example for other countries which suffer from occupation, devastation and uh, other serious problems, uh, so we can be a model, I'm sure, for all other countries which are facing or faced the same problems we did. Once again, welcome and thank you for being with us. Ölkəmizə ilk dəfə səfər etdiyini deyən BMT-nin məskunlaşma proqramının icraçı direktörü Maymuna Mot Şərifi, Prezident İlham Əliyevin rəhbərliyi ilə Azərbaycandakı inkişaf proseslərinin, şəhər planlaşdırma və inkişaf konsepsiyasının onda dərin təsirat hissi yaratdığını dedi. Azərbaycanda qədimliklə müasirliyin vəhdətinin şahid olduğunu, tarixi binalar saxlanılmaqla müasir tikillərinin ahəngdar formada inkişaf olunduğunu, şəhər planlaşdırılması və urbanizasiyanın tərkib hissəsi olan şəhər nəqliyyat sisteminin və yol infrastrukturunun müasirliyinlə məmnunluğunu bildirdi. Azərbaycana səfərinin bir gününü Ağdam şəhərində keçirdiyini deyən BMT-nin məskunlaşma proqramının icraçı direktörü dövlətimizin başçısının rəhbərliyi ilə Azərbaycan hökuməti tərəfindən həyata keçirilən Ağdam şəhərinin inkişaf və urbanizasiya planı ilə yaxından tanış olduğunu qeyd etdi. Maymuna Mot Şərifi Azərbaycanın məqsədinin Ağdamda daxil olmaqla işxaldan azad olunmuş ərazilərdə sıfır emisiyalı müasir ekoşəhər konsepsiyasının tətbiq edilməsi olmasını məmunluqla vurguladı. Bildirdi ki, BMT-nin məskunlaşma proqramı dünyanın müxtəlif ölkələrində post-münaqişə şəraitində şəhərlərin qurulmasında, dayanıqlı şəhər inkişaf konsepsiyalarının yaradılmasında təcrübəsi ilə dəstək verir və bu xüsusda Azərbaycan hökuməti ilə də sıx əməkdaşlığa hazırdır.